Hi, good morning. Um, we're looking at doing this session today, um, you know, covering the unit, which is technology and tourism and hospitality industry. Um, we've covered certain parts of the sections of this unit in the previous two sessions. And uh, in today's session, what we're looking at doing is covering tasks, uh, you know, from the learning outcomes, uh, which were left out, uh, things like the impact of IT on hospitality industry, uh, the importance of internet in international tourism and social media, and last but not the least, uh, you know, learning outcome four, which is the importance of security in the travel and tourism industry and how the travel and tourism industry actually looks at implementation of uh, technology, looking at areas like data protection and security issues. So we've got three presentations, uh, which are really, uh, you know, which I will be going through today in today's session. And they are named as learning outcome one, uh, impact of key on uh, travel and tourism. The other one is usages of management information system uh, in travel and tourism. And the third one that we are looking at is the role of uh, internet and social media in the travel and tourism industry. So I'm gonna go through some of these slides one by one, and then um, going to send you some handouts, which are going to be related to each of these individual learning outcomes. Uh, for additional reading towards the end of the presentation. So let me start with uh, the first one, which is uh, looking at the impact of on um, uh, travel and tourism industry. So putting the presentation in the, uh, you're putting the slides in the presentation mode. If you have any questions, please do type away on the chat. And what I will do is uh, take them up uh, as we go along uh, in, in the presentation. So what we've done so far in, in this particular unit is we've gone through the importance of technology uh, in the travel and tourism industry. We've understood a bit of background of how technology has evolved over the years. We've also looked at what are the problems which are being faced and how technology has helped solve those problems, things like problems of ticketing, you know, room management, uh, you know, MIS management of information systems, uh, you know, which, uh, which have been used to manage customer information, preferences, things like that. And over the years, how uh, different software and uh, you know packages in terms of uh, hardware and software have enabled the efficient operations of the hospitality industry. So today we are looking at um, you know, task uh, learning outcome 1.2 in particular, and then looking at the impact of IT on hospitality industry operations. So in just to begin with, as an introduction, you know, we, we have gone through this particular context of what is IT. IT stands for information technology. And in the hospitality industry, the, the use of IT has tremendously grown over the past 20 to 25 years or two decades. Now, this has happened primarily because of the uh, changes which are happening in the, in the sector, which is the technology is becoming much more efficient, fast, and the use of this technology is making um, you know, the uh, use of this technology is actually enabling the industry to uh, become much more efficient and provide wider range of services because tourism has become really global because of the connectivity uh, which has got established over the last two or three decades. Now, the, um, the key things that we are going to study within, uh, you know, this uh, section would be um, to understand what problems faced by the industry due to the lack of IT. Now, when IT was not there, what were the problems being faced by the industry? So, number one, uh, looking at some of the bullet points, there was an inaccuracy in terms of manually maintaining past and current guest details. So, if you had stayed in a hotel previously and um, that information was stored on a manual register, then sometimes when the guests wanted to rebook, then this information one took a bit of time to, um, you know, uh, recap and uh, bring forward. And the other thing was that sometimes these details were not captured or transferred over from previous bookings to the new bookings accurately. The second was the problem of maintaining large number of records, uh, you know, which is to do with the fact that, um, as you know, a lot of people, uh, the travel and tourism industry is over uh, $1.5 trillion in terms of its worth. So every year, over 300 million tourists travel, you know, on holidaying alone, uh, forget the business numbers. So here there is a problem of maintaining large number of records. 
and this is something which uh, you know the IT industry, uh, the use of IT computers, uh, uh, you know POS, point of sale systems, uh, electronic booking systems, online travel agencies. This has been enabled to a lot of aspect by IT, wherein these things are now efficient and much more easily accessible. And the last bit was inaccuracy in maintaining the inventory, which affects uh, the profits. So, for example, if you look at the food department or if you look at the uh, laundry department in the in the hotel, if the inventory of a particular item could not be maintained, um, you know, perfectly, then uh, the use of IT systems have actually enabled uh, this to happen much more accurately and efficiently. Now, there are different forms of technologies used within the industry, and a few of them are listed on the slide here. So there are systems like PMS, Property Management System, CRS, which is Central Reservation Systems, GDS, which is Global Distribution Systems, and this is directly related to one of the uh, tasks in the uh, unit. Point of sale, sales and catering, yield management, you know, guest history, telecommunication, which is systems like phone, uh, intercom and other things available within the rooms when you book a hotel, call accounting systems, uh, in-room systems, locking systems, payroll, uh, you know, time scheduling attendance and others which are utilized by the staff working within the particular hotel or the industry and accounting systems. What we're going to look at is obviously a few uh, just to understand uh, the use of these systems and how this has enabled the industry to become much more efficient. So there are you know, what I've done is I put a picture of a few that we get to see when you check in into a hotel. So, for example, you get a card or a key, electronic key, which you use to, you know, kind of when you when you check in and you move into your room, you use the key card to basically lock and unlock your room. When you check out, you're basically making payments through the credit card as against the cash. So, you know, there are credit card machines which accept payment. The other things that we look at is most hotels today offer Wi-Fi, so networks uh, which are installed across the different floors, accessibility into different rooms through Wi-Fi and Ethernet is now <clears throat> a common feature in most of the uh, hotels. And security, you know, which is a key aspect that we are going to discuss again in the learning outcome four, is also a key aspect which is uh, you know enabled through the IT side of things now being integrated within the hotel industry. And this is to look at, uh, in particular, you know, um, uh, looking at, in particular, the security for the guests and also monitoring activities, uh, you know, in some cases, in some departments for staff that the CCTV operations are particularly used. The, uh, the other thing that we look at uh, is that at the front desk, let's take an example, when you check into a hotel, when you're greeted by the receptionist, um, there is a great use of technology on that counter and there are certain things that you look at which is things like you know property management system which um, when you come in the operator there or the receptionist there is able to check into your reference with your last name see you know things like what room has been booked when it is booked how long is this booked for and you know what are the key features or things that you've booked in terms of your preferences and in some cases when you look at in certain hotels, there are self-service kiosks as well, which you also get to see at the airports when you are trying to check in. You can check in if you have only a you know hand baggage, then you can check in through those kiosks, which allows you to basically go through the system of uh, immigration, you know, at a at a greater speed, reduces the number of transactions that you have to do, and also to a certain extent, some of these systems, uh, you know, reduce the number of labor or people required to work within a particular department and makes uh, the operations much more efficient. Now, one of the key systems that we get to see, you know, which is used in most, uh, you know, retail organizations uh, to a certain extent, restaurants and you know uh, other places like gyms and things like that, is something called the point of point of sale system. Now, this is where actually the retail transaction gets completed. So, when you're checking out from the hotel and you're making a payment through the credit card, you're basically using something wherein uh, the receptionist will give you a bill and you will settle the invoice or the bill through the payment through a credit card and that is accepted through and the transaction goes through through the POS system. Now, the other thing that we are looking at is uh, in certain cases, you also have something called a cash register and that cash register is an electronic cash register. Now it's not a manual one wherein 
the receptionist will key in the figures and it will print out a receipt. So for example, you're at a bar or in the hotel or you're in a restaurant and when you ask for your check or your bill, what will happen is the uh, hotel uh, or the restaurant manager will essentially use a cash register to be able to give you a bill against which you will settle your payment. So these are things which are now becoming quite efficient in terms of operations, things like when you use facilities like the gym, the swimming pool, the sauna, uh, you know, uh, other facilities like the hotel, coffee shop within the within the hotel that you're saying, then point of sale systems essentially allow, you know, efficient generation of checks or invoices against which the customer is able to make the payment and, uh, you know, do the settlement of the invoice. In some cases, you end up signing and all these bills are collected at the reception. So when you check out, you can make a consolidated payment using the credit card machine. There is something called the property management system, PMS. This system basically allows, uh, you know, the reservations to be maintained. Uh, and, in, uh, and in this case, I'll give you an example. Like when you look at Holiday Inn, when you look at, uh, you know, Premier Inn, uh, Travel Lodge in the UK, what tends to happen is there are lots of these uh, um, Travel Lodge or Premier Inns within a location. So if you look at London, Manchester, large cities, they would have in excess of five or six of these Premier Inns spread across the city. Now, in an order for these systems to be efficiently working, and if you're trying to book a room online, what tends to happen is that uh, most of these uh, places use something called a property management system, wherein they're able to take adequate account of inventory uh, at any given point in time, so that if the bookings are happening online or within the hotel, they have accurate uh, you know, details available in terms of what rooms are available, how many rooms are available at what price and things like that. So this system helps in basically reservations. It also looks at accounting, you know, to a certain extent, if you're making payments online, then the system is able to take the payment and allocate that this has been paid and an appropriate receipt is generated and essentially allows for effective room management to happen uh, uh, across a group of, uh, you know, um, um, across a hotel chain, which has a number of hotels or locations in which uh, they have this, uh, uh, you know, um, booking system available. So PMS basically works in the background and allows uh, the uh, room management to happen uh, when you're trying to book through online in, in whether you're booking online or you're visiting a store or through a travel agent. Now, in order to make reservations, imagine if you just to understand this in a bit more detail, what you're looking at is if you're looking at making reservations, how can you make reservations? You can make reservations by picking up the phone, speaking to the operator, at the hotel or, or a travel agent, you can do the reservation online. You can go to a travel agent. You can also make reservations sometimes through mail order catalogs. And there are other forms of reservations that you can do. That means you can walk into the hotel and also ask to uh, make a reservation. So the property management system collects and collates all the different forms of information from uh, the reservations happening through different routes and then is able to accurately depict you know, the system of um, uh, what do you call reservations and rooms available so that at any given point in time the inventory available is absolutely accurate. Now there is something called an accounting module so here in most cases when you're doing a booking online what tends to happen is the, the website will ask you to create an account in order for you to be able to either book or make a reservation or in some cases when you're checking in. So when you check in, you are asked to create an account. Once you create an account, which is your name, personal details, uh, once you've done that, the account will essentially send, the, you'll get an email that your account has been created. And then to a certain extent, you can manage, manage and monitor the payment and you know uh, related transactions to the bookings that you're making through this particular accounting system. A lot of customers, imagine in a situation where a lot of customers who are part and, uh, you know, have a membership for a particular group of hotels, like the intercontinental hotels, what it then gives you through the guest accounting module is that it allows you to book, make reservations and also do checkouts automatically, uh, in this case, using this particular system. And uh, you, that way you are able to generate summaries, uh, you know, statements of where you stayed, how much you, uh, how long you stayed, what you paid for and things like that. Now, if you look at the rooms management module, typically uh, part of the property management PRS, property uh, system, um, in that system, what it does is basically it makes the accurate availability of rooms uh, across channels. So what will tend to happen is that 
and rooms one and module will basically be looked at by uh, you know the staff working within the hotel and once the room is available then a rate could be fixed once the rate is fixed uh, then either the information is updated so that at the reception if there is a booking coming in they have in house information available and to a certain extent uh, you know that information is also available to housekeeping so that they don't need to uh you know look at changing uh the rooms the linen and the other things in the hotel room because that room is empty or is uh, you know is currently vacant so these systems have integrated both the front end and the back end operations within the uh, you know, with the use of it within the travel and tourism industry now there are other systems that we get to see very briefly you know when you book a room go into a room you are able to control the heat and the air conditioning and you know certain other things within the room and this system uh, which allows you to do that is something which is integrated into the overall it system because each room each guest is able to maintain its own temperature and heating uh, you know um, and that is in the back end regulated through a centralized it system and that is called the energy management and climate control system that this is designed uh, for the purposes of maintaining you know the room temperature or air conditioning as per your comfort levels and this equipment then has the ability to be maintained remotely by the it staff in the hotel if the room is empty then this equipment can be operated and switched off or you know switched on depending on its requirement by the it staff in the background there are other things like the electronic locking system these are typically things wherein you are issued a rfid key or a, a you know key related with some sort of an electronic uh, code which uh, allows you to unlock your room and these keys have a magnetic strip which can be read just like the credit card and it is primarily so that the guests only have an uh, you know access to their rooms in terms of providing safety <clears throat> then this is something that we've seen across uh, you know the use wherein it's a supermarket that we visit or we go uh, you know and make uh, buy something in terms of products and services we are always asked to make payments you some of us make payments through the credit card some of us make it through the debit card and the machine which accepts this is a credit card terminal or a merchant terminal and which allows the credit card and connects it in the background with the bank and the it system to be able to process the payment as per the amount there is another uh, system that we get to see is that in most hotels rooms now you have something called the mini bars and the mini bars typically are all available and as a characteristic feature are of four oblique five star hotels obviously the hotel looks at making money because they are providing you chill drinks alcohol non alcoholic drinks in the vicinity of your room and there are different kind of mini bars which are available there are traditional which are non automated there are now semi automated and there are automated uh, microprocessor controlled mini bars which which means they are able to transport information back to the front desk in terms of what has been used or what has been uh, you know kind of taken out from the mini bar it does calculations on its own because of the sensors and the it system installed these systems basically are a part and parcel of something called a smart network which are normally installed within the hotel and hotel rooms and they take care of Uh, they basically connect some create something called an interconnected network of uh, devices within a particular room or within the hotel network and all of this in the back end is connected to the it infrastructure wherein all the information is stored on the server and is stored uh, so that the transactions can be retrieved and appropriate billing can be done to the guest room or the hotel when the uh, to the guest uh, uh, for the hotel room which has been used when the guest actually checks out so things like when you make a payment sometimes you are in a hotel you don't need to uh, walk up to the counter to be able to make the payment the uh, restaurant manager will bring a mobile card credit card machine and will be uh, charging your card or you'll be asked to sign and then the bill then gets generated which basically is passed on to the reception with where you can actually pay and settle when you check out the other things would be there is something called on demand tv and the audio visual part of equipment which is part and parcel of every room nowadays is you can rent movies uh, in the vicinity of your room and any movie that you rent or uh, basically you know watch can be built using the server because it is pay on demand kind of a, a you know network which is available wherein thousand movies are available and you can choose a movie you can once you decide to choose a movie to watch then the movie is booked and billed and that transaction is captured in the back end by the server and then the customer is uh, invoiced for it when when he or she is actually checking out 
and similar things happen for other services which are also provided within the hotel things like when you make an outbound call or if you use a pc within the uh, you know the office or the boardroom then these things can be built now there are other things which um, there are other forms of it system which typically you look at which are utilized by the staff so as you know in the hotel the staff typically work three shifts so if there are eight hour shifts and there are three shifts which the staff work the clocking in and clock out in terms of timing of the staff coming in and staff leaving is actually you know monitored as well so that there is um, you know the the shift timings of the staff could be moderated maintained and there are systems now available within the IT which allow this integration to happen rather than using the punch cards in the older days, uh, you know, a couple of decades back. So here, JD Edwards has a suite of application which uh, has automated, you know, things like warehousing, inventory, time and attendance and reporting. And it works with all major data collection devices and is able to provide accurate information as and when required to the manager or the supervisor of that particular department. And this particular system is also uh, integrated to the hotel IT infrastructure, wherein this is utilized primarily by the staff and not by the guests. Security, as we talked about, uh, you know, is an important aspect nowadays. Security is required to be monitored, and uh, you will get to see that in more major hotels today, uh, there is always a uh, you know installment. There is always CCTV cameras installed, and they are in operation to manage, manage and monitor the activity of staff, guests and you know any other untoward element within the hotel uh, premises and this is done through a centralized uh, system wherein a lot of cameras are installed and obviously they're all broadcasting back to a centralized server wherein somebody is looking at monitoring uh, this to safeguard security of guests staff and people in and around the hotel so that this is one, uh, part of the presentation and particularly covers you know um, you know the basic aspects of uh, you know IT in what is the impact of IT, uh, you know, in the tra in the travel and tourism industry? So this covers the task 1.2 uh, in learning outcome one, and I will have a presentation also uploaded on Moodle. I'll also send a copy across for you to be able to revise and uh, look at the handout. The second bit that we are looking at covering today is uh, to do with the management information systems, which are predominantly used in the hospital hospitality and uh, you know travel and tourism sector now here what we are looking at is the learning outcome 2.1 wherein it says ask uh, where it is asks for explain the role of management mis essentially in travel and uh, in tourism and hospitality operations so here i'm going to uh, run through a deck of slides which will give us some background in terms of how mis is integrated today in the uh, tnt sector or hospitality sector in this particular thing, we are going to be studying a couple of things like TPS transaction processing system, management information system, decision support system, and how these allow uh, you know certain operations and processes to happen, and how does the uh, hotel or hospitality staff actually use it to maintain you know security and uh, safety within the hotel room. Now, as I've already mentioned that you know. Travel tourism is the fastest going industry in any any country, any geography. So I'm taking an example here of the Indian geography, where in travel and tourism, because of the diverse uh, diaspora and the you know the spread of the Indian subcontinent, it is one of the fastest growing industry within the Indian context. And with the advancement of uh, you know budget hotels, things like we get to see in the Western countries like Premier Inn, Travel Lodge, you know Holiday Inn, and which are basically budget hotels, what has happened is the proliferation of these hotels, budget hotels has happened very clearly within other uh, countries and other areas wherein travel and tourism is growing. So what currently is happening is that there is a faster integration of you know, technology happening within these, um, within these uh, countries wherein they, they are growing in as a destination for travel and tourism. So case in point here is of the Indian subcontinent wherein it talks about the WTO, which is the World Travel Organization, predicts about 25 million tourists uh, visiting India in 2015. This number is 39 million for 2017. Now, India has currently over 200,000 hotel rooms and there is still a shortage of over 100,000 rooms. So if there are so many guests country currently visiting the country, there are still shortage of rooms and uh, you know hotel infrastructure in, in, in the Indian context when you look at that. 
So typically, when you look at budget hotels, India is typically adding about 114,000, you know, 114,000 hotel rooms over the next five years. And that, in terms of investment, is roughly 40,000 crores, or roughly, you know, four billion uh, um, uh, dollars in terms of investment, which is going to be put in to create the additional capacity required to accommodate all these guests. Now, this requires obviously the integration of IT. And case in point that we look at is, for example, the ginger chain of hotels, which is uh, which is owned by the Tata Group a very large conglomerate which has you know various interests in automobile uh, uh, tea iron and steel and a couple of other industries uh, software industry like tcs they have created something called the budget chain of hotels called the ginger chain of hotels and they have started to kind of you know um, uh, open 25 of these in various destinations to attract tourism now when we look at that what their goal and aim is primarily to integrate some of the key systems which are used in the Western world within the travel and tourism industry, and to make that system, uh, uh, to integrate that IT infrastructure, and then to make the MIA systems, making the overall operations of the hotels quite efficient and productive. Now, some of the things that we look at is, um, you know, uh, is that let's look at some of the systems and what these systems will help do is will help better plan, help better organize help better direct and help better control the basic operations of these hotels centrally through the integration of IT uh, and IT infrastructure uh, in the back end. So first things that we look at is TPA, which is transaction processing system. And this is nothing but uh, um, an IT system which allows the business transactions to be captured from any point within the hotel. So whether it's the front desk, is the restaurant, is the gym, the sauna, the spa, the laundry department, it allows real-time processing and capturing of transactions or services which your customers are using within the hotel while they stay and then they are made billable uh, and made available as a summary so that the billing could happen when the customer actually checks out. There is something called the room allocation system and this room allocation system is like a central reservation system which is being employed across the 25 hotels which, which is being opened. And here, what they've done is they've decided on the different types of uh, you know rooms. They have, they have a lot of agents which access the system. So at any given point in time, the room allocation system allows the system to predict uh, and provide accurate information in terms of how many rooms are available, at what time, in what place, and what uh, at what price, so that the bookings, when it's happening through the agents, online route, or in the hotel, they are all captured accurately and are able to be processed accurately. There are other systems which are being employed, and I was giving an example of the, uh, you know, you having a meal at the restaurant. So here, a system which has been designed, uh, which captures real-time transactions uh, under the TPS system, is a system which is utilized in the restaurant, wherein the uh, person is able to take your orders according to what you are uh, wanting to buy, and then accordingly provide you, you know, the the food. Once the food uh, is there, you know, once it is served then the ability to be able to generate an invoice or a check, which is then settled by the customer, either at the time of checkout or in the restaurant itself, uh, you know, through the, and the whole record of this is actually captured in the back end by the TPS system. There are other things that we've mentioned uh, briefly in the earlier presentation, which is things like the point of sale terminals. This point of sale terminal is also a type of a transaction processing system. It basically is able to capture the transactions at a particular point and then communicate them back to the back end, uh, bigger system wherein they are stored to generate customer preferences, uh, you know, records, so that next time the customer is looking at these services, these services can be provided much more tailored and the preferences of the customer noted so that they can be more specifically generated towards a type of a customer with, with his preferences kept in mind. So it keeps track of sales, uh, in some of the cases, it is also used for things like, uh, you know, payroll and accounting. And in some cases, this POS is also able to generate reports at the end of the day in terms of how many transactions have happened, what is the money which has come in. Uh, you know, it automatically is able to cash out the cash register and things like that. So it's a type of a transaction processing system. And normally you get to see this towards where part of the system requires billing and invoicing to happen. 
places like restaurant gyms sonas parks you know uh, at the reception but in the back end this system is connected to the it infrastructure wherein all these transactions are then downloaded and stored for future <clears throat> you know references there are things like wireless pos and you get to see an example of this which is typically uh, in the case of uh, you know when you make payments and i did mention an example when you are in a restaurant instead of you going out to the counter to pay the uh, you know check <coughs> the uh, the the person is able to bring you a mobile pos which is wirelessly enabled and can accept your card payments to be able to then transfer the transaction back to the centralized register or the cash register where it is stored and is able to you know uh, keep a track of this uh, for billing purposes <coughs> Excuse me. This is an example of uh, you know the screen. In some cases, when we look at the point of sale terminal, Sorry, moving forward to MIS. Now, looking at the MIS, uh, MIS is nothing but a management information system, which basically allows you to integrate all the uh, backend operations within a particular office. So, in the case of a, a hotel or the travel and tourism industry, this particular system in the backend is able to connect all the departments within a hotel. So if you think of various sections or departments within the hotel, things like the laundry department, housekeeping, you look at security, you look at maintenance, front office, back office, food and beverage, which includes restaurants, and also the other departments like the accounting department, payroll department, it is able to integrate all the information coming in from these departments into the centralized system. And this is then used by the management to create a strategy and basically look at reports which are generated uh, using the MIS and then are presented to the management for them to be able to make uh, key decisions. A sample report would be that at the end of the day, uh, the general manager in the hotel could basically use the MIS to create a report which will basically talk about how many rooms were uh, you know, sold, how many rooms uh, are still vacant, things like how many transactions happened in a in a restaurant, what was the incoming, what is the outgoing, and you know, things like that. <clears throat> the PM we've already studied, you know, it basically takes care of the room management and the connectivity of uh, the room management and the booking system with regards to the uh, different forms of uh, booking which are available through travel agents and, you know, online website, even walk-ins. <clears throat> now, just to look at the very basic functions to recap here, uh, you know, the property management system enables guests to make reservations. So if you have an account and you are a regular visitor to, to one of the hotel and you prefer staying in, say, for example, the intercontinental hotels, you've signed in, uh, you, you can make reservations using that system yourself. Sometimes it enables some basic form of accounting. That means you're able to check in and register and also check out by paying. And that is the, uh, the through the guest accounting system, which is a part of PMS. Uh, in some cases, it allows staff to maintain guest facilities. That means because you stay in that uh, group of hotels as a member and your preferences and transactions are recorded, sometimes the staff, when you're checking in and checking out, can actually tailor some of the services depending on your preferences and your past usage of the hotel. <clears throat> it allows you to keep track of your financial transaction. That means you can generate your statements and summaries because you have an account and a login. You can track your activities uh, and some of the stale staff within the hotel can also track your activities using the account management system, which is there. It also allows you to interface with other systems, things like what are the kind of holidays you can take under the membership. Maybe say if you normally tend to visit most of the I, you know, IHG hotels or intercontinental group hotels within Germany, France, sometimes you might get promotional packages to look at uh, the holidays in US or in other countries. So <clears throat> this allows you to, uh, this allows both the sales staff and yourself to be able to track some of these information. 
PMS also interfaces with other systems within the uh, organization in terms of the backend, and it helps generate reports on the transaction and activities as a guest that you're doing while you're staying at the hotel. Now, <clears throat> when we look at putting all this together under the PMS system, this is a snapshot of what all it connects to in the back end and where the software and hardware is uh, you know, connected so that uh, it is able to capture and record all the vital bits and pieces of information with regards to a customer staying at the hotel. <clears throat> so PMS can capture information from POS, which are used in restaurant and outlet, catering management, you know, room reservations, food and beverage, uh, you know, things when you use facilities like the, you know, the, the, the office desk and other things within the hotel for email, internet, and also if you use the infrastructure, you know, within some of the suites, things like the computers and other things. <clears throat> now, in some cases, this is a flow basically showing how a room service order is taken and it's recorded using, uh, you know, the transaction processing system, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Now, going on to this type of system, which is called the decision support system, these systems are basically uh, you know, classified as computerized information systems, which help the management or the key people within the management to be able to take decisions. So say, for example, a general manager or a manager at the front desk, events manager, they are able to take key bits of information using this system uh, in certain cases, and they are, because this system primarily records all the data which is uh, which is either transaction transacted <clears throat> by the customer or the staff into the system, and this system then allows the the senior management to be able to look at CRM, which is customer relationship management, based on the preferences and the type of things which the uh, uh, the guest or the client has actually used while they were in the hotel. Now. <clears throat> CRM, uh, uh, CRM, uh, which is basically nothing but customer relationship management, is a part of the decision support system because some bits of information, which is the information related to demographics of the uh, client or customer preferences uh, and the service of usage of their services while the customer is actually staying at the hotel, is all a part of the customer relationship management uh, system. <clears throat> Here, the model for managing the company interaction currently happens with current and future customers. And in the case of, for example, Ginger Hotels, uh, owned by the Tata Group, their aim is to basically record some of these bits of uh, services which the customers use, and then use this information to make them repeat customers of the, uh, you know, the same hotel or these services. And some of the key things which <clears throat> you will find are a part of the CRM system are things like relationship management, Salesforce automation, and the use of technology actually allows the IT department or the you know front desk to be able to send out newsletters, email man you know email campaigns uh, at relevant points in time to be able to promote some of these feature you know products and services to its customers so that they can get repeat business. Now, when you look at IT in particular, the use of IT has extended, uh, you know, to basically look at creating a strategy wherein uh, some of these tools and techniques are being used by hotels to create repeat customers in in the in the, for for the say for example for hotel bookings, and what you get to see uh, which has been created is things like or you know channels like corporate tie-ups, loyalty cards. Referral systems, travel agent, you know, hop and hop off services, and you know, corporate discounts. Now, these are all various forms of promotions, which also capture data. So, when you be when the hotels, uh, you know, for example, a hotel chain like Hilton, they know throughout the year that they are busy during summer holidays, winter holidays, and you know, the peak season. There are certain times of the year when the hotels are not having full capacity in terms of bookings. So, what the uh, the hotels have done in terms of the management has done is they have created a strategy through which they come out with offers uh, using you know certain uh, types of tools and techniques things like loyalty card referral systems travel agents and then here also a great amount of data is generated and that data needs to be captured using the use of IT systems 
things like the transaction processing system, PRS, property management system, and you know decision support system. <clears throat> so imagine a use of a loyalty card. Now, if you are a member of a group of hotels and you regularly use the hotel for business and personal use, your loyalty card records all the basic bits of information in terms of your usage, uh, how long you stay, you know, uh, what you pay, what you eat, and things like that. Now, data from these can also be downloaded onto the systems at some point in time, and they then can be used to tailor services or provide products and services which are much more tailored to the customer requirement. So here, this particular, uh, uh, you know, um, capturing of information using certain techniques which are prim prim primarily used for marketing and promotional purposes also have integration of IT because at some stage, this particular uh, you know, device or the channel also captures the customer information, which is then passed on to the backend, uh, you know, uh, uh, IT systems to be able to be processed, and then uh, on the basis of which decision making and a new strategy in terms of promotions could be formed. Now, last but not not the least, what we are looking at is security. Now. There are various things that you look at within the hotel which are available. Now, in most hotels, you typically have something called the electronics locker or safety lockers. Here, they expect you to kind of, you know, put in most of your valuables. And when you're in and about, uh, in, in, inside or outside the room, this particular thing has electronic key code, which you can use, password, and then create, and most of your valuables can stay, uh, you know, safe. There are obviously other things that we've discussed, things like the electronic access uh, keys for the card, for the doors. That means the guest having the key can only get into the room and come out of the room. There are times wherein sometimes you have to, when you get into the room, you have to put the card into the slot so that it activates the electricity, lighting, and everything else in the room as well. This is to save on the unauthorized use of. <clears throat> This is to save on the unauthorized use of, you know, the uh, facilities and services within the hotel room. And then obviously supervision in terms of CCTV is something that we get to see quite often, which is happening within the hotels because they need to look at maintaining security and also look at the, uh, the premises to secure these premises, both for customers, guests, and, you know, staff working within the, uh, within the system. So that brings us to the end of welcome to which is primarily related to the use of management information systems across the travel and tourism industry and this particular slide will also along with the handout be uploaded on Moodle which you can look at at a later stage. I'm going to briefly run through the last bit which is the welcome three which is uh, the role of internet and social media and travel and tourism and for which there's, there's this deck of slides that I'm going to go through. Um, as you know that the internet, the use of internet, which has become quite, uh, you know, detailed now, and has given rise to the uh, channels like online travel agencies in the recent, uh, you know, years. Agencies like Kayak, you know, uh, Travago, Hotels.com, Bookings.com. These are all portals through which customers now are able to access, uh, you know, um, property management system in general, are able to book rooms and you know uh, or book hotels depending on when they are and where they are holiday <clears throat> so we, we so we look at internet now as a very important channel um, you know which customers today utilize to be able to book their holidays or book hotel rooms uh, you know using this channel so essentially looking at a few slides which basically talk about that in the pre 2000 if you look at you know there was there was nothing uh, of these services available and most of the bookings of the hotel used to happen through customers, uh, a customer agents, I mean, tra travel agents or, you know, agents in general, which looked at basically providing you these booking services. But with the use of internet and the use of uh, uh, technology within the internet, these services are now within the grasp of every customer. And you're able to book rooms, look at virtual views of the rooms and the hotels even before you do the booking. Uh, yourself in the comfort of your room using some of these features and you know facilities now along with that what has happened is that in most cases what we are doing now is before we book go to a particular place we also look at understanding the reviews the site has had and that is where the social media has played an important role is that 
there are uh, you know sites like uh, TripAdvisor, which basically collect reviews on behalf of uh, the customers for the properties or the hotels in which they stay in, and these uh, are then also influential in you to take a decision while you're booking a hotel or a holiday package and things like that. <clears throat> so social media websites today look at you know the hotels and companies within the hospitality industry, and they have a keen understanding of how you are able to look at <clears throat> you know uh, doing the reviews when you've stayed in a particular hotel and uh, you know used a particular service within the industry. The other things that we look at is um, smartphone applications. So most of the phones today, in in the last couple of years, have d developed a lot of applications wherein this particular information is available in the palm of your hands using a smartphone or an app that you've downloaded. Things like on the iPhone, the Android. Most of the business travelers have uh, you know apps for the hotels, for their loyalty card, and things like that, which allow you to keep track of the points that you're earning <clears throat> and the facilities that you're using within the hotel. Now, the in role of internet has also become quite important, is because it has become one of the key channels through which uh, you know now customers advertise and do an outreach to customers. So when you look at, in particular, the example of internet, uh, what, what is happening is that the spend on marketing is increasing three folds as compared to the traditional spend which happens primarily through the print or TV advertising. Because we have access to the internet on most of the devices today. There are uh, you know, devices like smartphones, uh, laptops, PCs, and also um, because of uh, you know, the internet. This has become an important tool wherein uh, the uh, internet is used by the hotel or the travel and tourism industry to look at aggressive marketing, to do an outreach to the customers, uh, wherein you are able to go to a wider audience by spending less money and advertising your offers across mm -hmm. the geography. A typical example of that is the pay-per-click advertising, wherein what you get to see is that when you try and find and do a search on Google for, say, for example, a hotel that you want to book, you will normally see sponsored ads which come through on the right hand side or on the top, which are basically paid for. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, the group of hotels or you know basic advertisers are actually paying a bit of premium to try and kind of you know have their services advertised on top uh, when when you do a search using the Google search engine. Mm -hmm. The internet is also used as a key tool of comparison. And for booking and reservations today, before you even book a room or a hotel, what you do is you go onto a comparison website. You look at basically uh, comparing the prices of the rooms and the features that you're getting. And this has been enabled because of the use of internet and the uh, software, which allows you to be able to compare some of these features. This weren't available. If you look at some of these things, they were not available before uh, 2002 within the travel and tourism or the hotel industry. And here you're able to make immediate bookings, you're able to cancel bookings, mm -hmm. amend bookings, and all this is possible because of the of internet. <clears throat> this um, slide basically is an interesting slide because it gives you an, a, you know, an idea in terms of how, in terms of how much in terms of percentage uh, is used, uh, you know, for on by online um, by customers to make online reservations. So online travel agencies like Travelocity, Orbitz, Expedia, you know, they are. 34% of uh, you know all the bookings made across the hotels uh, or for holidays and other things. The other websites, which are 27%, personal referrals, 25%. You recommend a site like Secret Escapes to a friend through via email, and that is nothing but a personal referral. That means you can only sign into that site if you have been referred by somebody on email, and that that is 25% today in terms of referral as a business. And there are others which are to call to travel agencies. As you can see, they're on the decline. People are going directly now online to be able to book, do reservations and bookings as against going to travel agents or you know travel companies because they see if they cut out the middlemen, they are able to get better prices for bookings and reservations as against, uh, and also make comparisons as against the travel agents and authorities. Now, this has led to also one of the key things which has happened is this has led to more hotel, uh, more revenues for the hoteliers because it enables them to cut out the middle channels, middlemen in the middle, and the, they are able to reach out to the customer directly because of the use of internet and social media. <clears throat> so this is a new channel which offers the hotel products and services to the customer directly 
They have the ability to be able to charge a deposit uh, for a room prior to a check-in. That means you can make payments before or at the time of booking, and they're able to accept payments from all possible means, which is PayPal, credit cards, debit card, and while you are making or surfing uh, for the information as well. The other benefits, um, you know, is that it has led to a bit of decrease in the hotel expenses in terms of the marketing costs, you know, things like telephone costs, staff costs, because it has cut out a lot of in intermediate channels. Like uh, mm -hmm. if you're looking at booking a hotel, most of the information is available online. You can see the virtual view of the room. You can see the types of facilities which it provides, which means that you do not need to be able to speak to an operator at the hotel to try and confirm some of these services because they're advertised quite clearly uh, and in advance using the internet on the hotel website. So it decreases the expenses to a certain extent, wherein uh, the human interaction and employment level, uh, wherein certain things depictable through the internet allows and the use of technology allows them to be done away with when you're looking at um, you know, reservations and booking. In some cases, it has also enabled ease of transaction for customers because of the automated payment systems. That means you can pay by any form uh, using either PayPal, credit cards, debit cards, other forms of payments. You can book the, make the booking, but you can pay at the time when you check in into the hotel. And these kind of make the transactions easier for customers. Last but not the least, a few things that we look at, which is you know uh, customer relationship management. Um, this uh, the use of technology also has come in wherein there are now automated systems wherein you can dial and get information about a particular room or a service uh, on the telephone number. So that means you call a particular number and there's an automated service which helps you get that bit of information, which is either emailed to you, put in the post, and that uh, you know, also allows for facilitating faster communication. A typical example of that is you're surfing the internet, you want to book a hotel, but it's 11 p.m. in the night. You don't expect somebody at the front desk or in the bookings department to be present within the hotel to be able to give you that information that you need there and then. So automated communication systems allow you uh, to basically call in a particular number at the hotel and that information uh, after the automated service asks you a few uh, you know, questions is able to either send that across to your email or through the post as, as per your preference and you're still able to get that information at that point in time. So it facilitates easier communication at odd hours because of the use of IT and uh, internet and technology in general. Now, a lot of the, um, there is a positive and a negative effect of the use of internet and social media. One of the positive and negative effect could be that the customers are able to put reviews online, which can be picked up by others to get influence while they do the booking. So if you've not had a good experience and you blog about it or you put it on the internet on a site like TrickMetrovisor, some of the other customers who are looking at booking the rooms can also look at that review and the way you put that review, which helps them to either make a favorable decision or, or change the hotel in terms of not making a favorable decision. So customer reviews are quite important in the context of internet and social media because this is something which customers look at today, if, even before making bookings or reservations online. And it, to a certain extent, also persuades and helps influence their decision while they're making uh, bookings with regards to reading the reviews. So a positive review is worth, you know, a thousand word of mouths, which, which is what they say is can generate business. And a negative review can easily drive customers away. There are lots of surveys which um, um, you know the internet allows us to serve because you are able to once you've used the service or a facility then the hotel can actually send across a survey to you and that survey basically means that you are able to provide an accurate feedback uh, take that survey and then because of which it allows the customers and the hotels and the industry in general to be able to get feedback in terms of how to improve their services or better provide those services tailored to your preferences when you next use that service within the hotel. And it has made the feedback system quite faster, instant, because they send you a survey, you can take a survey online using the internet, all the record responses are recorded online and the calculation of those responses provides efficient piece of information which then the senior management can use or the person concerned manager can use to basically uh, you know, tailor that service next time in a very better and efficient way when you make use of that service again. There are some of the outs which I'm going to across 
for this presentation as well. And that would help you to revise uh, and build a bit more knowledge in terms of, uh, you know, some of these issues. And with this, what will happen is we have kind of wrapped up this unit four um, uh, in terms of covering all the four learning outcomes and the role of IT uh, or technology in general within the travel and tourism industry. So thanks a lot for attending the session today. Uh, I will send across a copy of this recording and the presentations and the handouts to you uh, in the email just after the session. If you have further queries and questions, please feel free to get back to me and as always uh, available on phone and email. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye now.